So, another day, another trip over to North County Dublin to try and help poor wildlife that has been messed with by man-made catastrophe. In this case, it is the famous swans of um, Balbriggan Harbour. Balbriggan Harbour is filled with oil. There's pollution constantly flowing down that river. Um, Fingal County Council should be sorting that out as part of their biodiversity plan and making all of the rivers uh, biodiversity corridors. Of course, we should be doing that all across Ireland. Anyway, I'm preaching to the choir here, am I? So, two swans to capture. And as I'm always saying, catching two animals is not twice as difficult as catching one. Uh, the same way cycling two bicycles is not twice as difficult as cycling one. Uh, one's quite doable, the other impossible virtually. So it's going to be very, very difficult. I'm meeting Andrea out there who knows these swans. Fortunately, Audrey and the rest of the team that are looking after the swans and trying to campaign to get the harbour cleaned up, they can't make it today. But uh, it's beautiful weather, the tide should be with us. Hopefully the swans will play ball. So to save two mating swans, affectionately known as Romeo and Juliet. We're going to talk about what's happening on the ground there for the next while. In a moment, we'll be joined by Dan Donoher, uh, the Kildare Wildlife uh, Manager. Uh, but first, Audrey Williams, who's also with the Kildare Wildlife Rehabilitation people. Hello, Audrey. Hiya, how are you? Thanks for having us on. Oh no, delighted. When we saw the pictures early today, we became alarmed because we love our wildlife on the show. Uh, Where are Romeo and Juliet, the current pair? Have you taken them from the harbour? So we, not at the moment, we did go to rescue Romeo and Juliet um, and we were unsuccessful that day. So you have to take into consideration that we have rescued this pair from the harbour badly oiled twice before. Okay. So this is our third rescue. They're very clever and very wary to us because mm. of the previous rescue. These are getting cute now. They know you. You're nearly on first name, name terms with them and they know where they're going when, when you get them. It, it's not easy, is it, to, to uh, catch them? It's not. So again, all our volunteers are trained on how to handle wildlife properly and we have some equipment and stuff to do that. But the swans are clever. They know now at this stage and they can recognise the volunteers coming um, and who, who they are. So um, it is proving to be challenging and we have to probably put on a bigger team and try some new ways to, to capture them. So I'll show you the kind of strategy that we have in place. Um, from looking at the maps, we decided that the best way to capture these swans would be if they would go up into the river. Now, hopefully, it was torrential rain yesterday, and hopefully that's not going to be too bad and make the river flow fast. I hope not. Um, the swans are in bad condition, so they need to come in, even though potentially that, rain, that same rainwater may wash all of the oil into the... Uh, into the sea and the swans will be okay or whatever but now they're in bits already uh, they've been preening and cleaning up this oil and that obviously is um, poisoning them the entire time uh, incinerating their digestive tract so i uh, going to try and capture them try and capture them in the river hopefully the timing will be right uh, hopefully we can corral them and hopefully we can catch the two of them if not we'll get one of them today and try again another time um, that's just sometimes how that has to be done. And yeah, I'll show you around the area and the site and stuff. Uh, so, wish us luck. You can see, here are some ones in beautiful Balbriggan Harbour. The water really lets it down. It's really, really dirty and murky and oily. Um, hopefully those ones will head up the river that goes underneath that awesome uh, viaduct. But, Water is running quite quickly in the river, so I wonder if they will. If they do, we might be in good stead. But down here, trying to catch them, I think that's a bad idea. We've got trip hazards. You can probably get one of them, no problem, and then struggle to get the second one for weeks. So I think the best plan would be to just uh, take one of them, if, or sorry, to take them if they go up the river. And really, that'd be the only plan. Now, it's a very hot day. And as I walk around here, I can actually smell all the fumes of the oil. So even if you're not really seeing just how bad it is, it's really bad. Um, you can see it there. I would say the guys working around this area, these fishermen and everything, I would say they're getting a fairly toxic dose of uh, diesel fuel. It looks like diesel and it looks like maybe some sort of food oil waste, grease. So uh, pretty bad. Um, we just need 
the swans to play ball. So Andrea, you can just see her there, is uh, walking down to start feeding the uh, swans and hopefully we're going to corral them up in the river up here. Look at that viaduct in the background, it's very, very cool. So if we could get them up here into this river, specifically up this end past the bridge, we would be in good stead, I think. Still very difficult to catch two animals at the one time, but it's our best bet. So if you look at this here, if we were in this section here, I think this is where we have the best chance. Okay, so we're trying to get them onto the river so we can get them further up the river so that we can corral and use three people to catch. Um, currently feeding crumbs because we want to keep them hungry. We are playing ball. It's after seven o'clock now. We've high tide has come and gone. They're way out there in the middle. They're very, very wary. They're obviously very unwell. Um, I think it's going to be our job to try and catch these poor things. And we might end up catching them when they're too sick from all the oil. They may die. So as a general rule, we avoid going onto the water when we're trying to catch animals. It's usually not very successful. But in this case, we were kind of down to the wire. We felt like we had one last chance in the day and the swans were very sick already. So Andrea got onto her paddleboard and very slowly and methodically took her time to just generally encourage the swans to prefer to go towards the river. And once they were through that bridge, we could drop down a corral and that would really step us into the right direction in terms of catching both of these swans today. So, we really are turning into a full-blown operation here today. We have got two ladders out. The swans are just not playing ball at all. And, you know, nor should they. That's their thing. So, we're getting the ladders ready. We're potentially going to corral in a different location. We will see. Plan is, my friend Flatzer is from the town. He's going to help with his ladder and potentially we're going to try and do the corral maneuver but from the far side it's absolutely less than ideal but if it's all we've got it's all we've got so we'll see as always wish us a lot of luck because that's what we're going to need Andre it's great yeah Okay, Flatter, you come all the way over, take this, hand it to Andrea. Yeah, super. Pass that to Andrea. I don't know if I can go down this safely. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. I'll lift this over your head. Let it out a little bit. You could wonder. You're gonna get a little bit wet, I'm afraid. Yeah, you're under. Okay, Flatzer. Give me a bit more. This became a bit of a nightmare as the silt and the water, it was all much deeper than we had expected it to be because, you know, how could we know? And so the corral mission became a bit different and a bit more complicated. Flatzer. Uh, he ran off, got some additional rope, came back, tied it onto the harbour wall, lowered it down, and this was so that the, uh, this net, what I'm calling a corral, would stay in place. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why did we go through all these lengths? Well, if one of these uh, swans escaped, I think the likelihood is it would have died pretty quickly. Um, it would have been harder to catch. And the thing about wildlife rescue is, Patience is the name of the game, and you've got to plan for all the things that can go wrong. The temptation is to plan for how it could go right. And when people see other videos where I race in and I go hands-on with animals, they kind of always ask me, Piers, why don't you just grab the two swans, or why don't you just grab that one and whatever. You've got to plan for the worst case scenario, not the best case scenario. And so I wanted to have this corral in place so that we had a literal safety net in case one of the swans got past Andrea or past me when it came to capture. So as I'm always saying, it's about stacking the odds in your favor. And that's what we were trying to do here because the odds were against us. Okay, 
You need to make sure that's wedged in so that the rope doesn't fall down because it's going to fall down. So maybe wrap the rope around that blue thing a couple of times. Yeah, wrap it around and then back around that side. Yeah, just like you're doing. Perfect. Yeah, that's beautiful. Exactly like that. Okay, excellent. Try to hold that ladder for me, please. I'm going to come up. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hold on tight. Okay, we're good. Okay, give us the radio. Okay, super. Thank you so much, pal. Andrea? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, fantastic. I'm just going down onto the mud, so I'm going to be standing behind you looking directly in to see what's going on, okay? Okay, this is our situation. Andrea's in there. This is our corral. It's looking open. Okay. So again, patience is the name of the game here. I really don't want a swan getting past Andrea. That would be the worst possible thing. So rather than trying to go down and grab the swans in this situation, again, we just take our time, walk around them, hopefully either cornering them right there, or more likely and preferably having them, or just encouraging them to climb up across those rocks and up the river. They usually go up there, but the tide is particularly low. I extend the swan hook, and swan hooks always make a good double for depth checkers, and they can be used as wading poles, which is great. I'm wearing waders here, as I always say, if you don't know what a wading belt is, don't use waders. Uh, I also have a life jacket on, and Andrea has a personal flotation device as well. I'm just again trying to encourage now at this point, encouraging the swans to head on up. And you can see the difficulty they're having climbing up these rocks and you'll see it later on in the video. It'll give you an indication of just how weak and sick these poor swans are. Plan A eventually, Andrea had to do some magic on the paddle board, a bit of swan whispering knowing just how much to give but not too much. And now they're up here in an area that, again, we can corral and I think we've got a very high percentage of catching them in. We could even corral them in for that. Here we are, swans. And we're back to plan A now. Um, I'm just waiting for the paddle boards and the ladders and everything to get organized. They will. We've got time now. It's on our side. They're in the right place. So we'll all take a big deep breath. We'll regroup. And then we're going to go in and do the actual catching and capturing of these guys. So we're going to move them up another corral, a coax on the far side to try and coax them back down here. And then, um, yeah, we're going to get the two of them. It's going to be great. Well, just watch. <laughs> we said at the start of this video how oil is toxic, not just to these birds, but also to humans, of course. So from a rescue point of view, it made sense because the heavy rainfall had cleared this river out and the river was actually really, really clear and um, free from pollution for the time being. Now, obviously that pollution was just down in the harbor, but from rescue point of view, it meant we had essentially non-oiled water to deal with, which makes life much easier for us. Andrea. Go, go way back and don't feed them. Don't, I don't want them going any further. Okay, let's just leave it like that, Flatter. I think that's okay for the time being, okay? Andrea, I don't want them going further up. Just come out just for a sec. Let them settle here, okay? Super. Super, super, super. Super, super. Let's just have a little regroup for a sec, okay? Okay, this is all really, really good. So while I have this, I'm uh, just gonna ask you, 
to support the Patreon. All the rescue work that we see uh, costs loads of money. Uh, we need to buy carriers and gloves. That's not even to mention renting premises and everything that goes into all these rescues. Um, also, the videos that you're seeing of me doing rescue, that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's so many volunteers, so many people helping out. And uh, yeah, please support them and support the work that Kildare Their Wildlife do by joining the Patreon if you're not already. Um, follow us on Instagram for all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it really, really helps. Anything that you can do to support the work that we're doing is going to help wildlife in Ireland. Such a beautiful spot, and it's just rotten with pollution. If you look at this here, if we were in this section here, I think this is where we have the best chance. That's it, Flatter, good job. I'm kind of stuck at a point here. Flatter, let them go past you if possible. Yeah, yeah, let them go past you towards Andrea. One is coming, they're coming to you, Andrea? Yeah, thank you. Okay, excellent. Is there, okay, thank you, that's good info. Okay, Flats, so you can encourage a little bit again. I want them to go towards Andrea better, that they go upstream than downstream. Yeah, that's good. A little bit less. Yeah, that's good. Andrea, are you ready? Yeah, let them come to you a little bit more, Andrea. Keep, keep that hook away for a minute. And just let them come to you a bit more. Okay. Let me get past this next bit, guys. Okay. I'm kind of stuck here. Flats are be ready. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, be ready. Good, good, good. I'm kind of stuck. I, yeah, take that swan hook away a little bit, Andrea. Yeah, just you, you just take it away a little bit. I'd rather them go to you than to me. Yeah, I'm nearly past this bit here. Okay, just take a breath. Let them come to you a little bit more. Okay, we're getting very close. We gotta get ready, okay? You ready? We're nearly there. Keep corralling. If we can corral them like this. Yeah, keep doing that. Yeah, what you're doing is great. Yeah, yeah, just keep doing exactly what you're doing. What is wrong with them? Okay, got him. So what I would like now, Flatter? Yeah. But I'm gonna want him to uh, take this. Yeah, you're good. Okay, you did amazing. Super well done. High stress. You did brilliant. Okay, just come over here and grab this neck so that he doesn't escape. Hold his neck. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm coming over now. Oh. So, see that wrap? Yeah. Place that on the ground, the handle's facing down. Let go of the neck. Yeah, let go of the neck around. Once he doesn't escape, that was my only concern. You all right there? Beautiful. Yeah, flat it now on the ground. Beautiful, yeah, looks good. Okay, you'll help me a little bit here. Make sure his wings are in the right configuration. Yeah, that's all very good. Now, yeah, you got him by the neck so he can't escape. That's the main thing. Let me just organize this handle. Yeah, place that down. And then that comes across. 
This one. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm gonna get you to stay holding yeah, this guy. Yeah. Hold him by the neck. Keep him under control. What'd you say? Can you come yeah. Where's the second swan run? Okay, no problem. We're all good. We're all good. Okay. You got her by the neck. I've got her by the wings. I've got her. You're good. <laughs> you, are you free? Yeah, I'm free. Okay, thank you. And then I'll. Uh, uh, no, not everybody. That's definitely true. So Andrea immediately took the two swans straight down to Grey Abbey and Minite Vets down in Kildare, right beside Kildare Wildlife Rescue, where they were given the right medication and fluids to make sure that they could come back as strong as possible. One of the reasons we caught these animals at the same time is because swans are essentially companion animals to each other and we're all about minimizing that stress. So we put them under as little stress as possible up until the point of capture and then Andrea drove them straight down to Kildare Wildlife Rescue and they are going to be given the absolute best care there and they're going to come back twice as strong as they were before. But we really need the council, the government, the EPA, everybody to get together and to clear up that river and to catch the people who are polluting it and to make it safe for all wildlife and for the residents in uh, Bob Brigham. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please support Kildare Wildlife any way you can. Thank you.